Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we have the Box Palma, actually a very interesting device and very nice. I'll be showcasing what this is all about today. So if you're looking for a companion device, let's say you have a flip phone like here, the Summit Flip, and you want to have communication apps or maybe your app for work, this device can be a good replacement. It is a little bit on the expensive side. I will go over the frequently asked questions first uh, right here but there are other alternatives that I'll talk about towards the end of the video. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit of the apps that it brings. It brings a couple of tools like a recorder, calculator, navigation ball, clock, push to read, scanner, uh, music. It does have a camera. I'll be showcasing some samples for that, but you're going to need an app in order to make it work. Something like open camera from the Droid store or, you know, the Play Store. It does bring the Play Store. I don't use the Play Store, so I'll be downloading apps that are not from the Play Store. And it also does bring a browser, but all of that you can just relegate to Wi-Fi only because it doesn't have a SIM card. So you're not going to be super distracted. It's quite helpful to have that on the go, especially if you're traveling or something like that. The refresh rate is quite nice, very fast, and the brightness is very um, adequate. I think it automatically adjusts sometimes, and you can also adjust it yourself. If you swipe down, uh, you can go less or more brightness, more color temperature according to your preferences, which are one it is the one that you prefer. It does also have the ability to install APKs because it runs Android. As you see right here, I am running Droidify, which is an application store, and you're able to get you know all of your different apps. So right there, there's a little bit of what the keyboard looks like, but AntennaPod, one of my favorite apps for podcasting. Right there, you can download it and install it, and it's pretty snappy. You know, it connects to your Wi-Fi without any issues. Um, it, and it does have different functions that you get used to in the navigation section. So for example, if you navigate on the middle, it goes home. But if you do it a little bit on the left side, it does kind of like your frequently used apps, as you see right there. And if you go up on the right, uh, it gives you a certain customization per app. So whether you want your refresh modes to be regal, ultra fast, fast HD, uh, depending on your necessities then you are able to adjust according to your preferences in every app that you use, which I think it's a great advancement and a you know very good and welcome thing that you're able to customize it per app. Now, let's go over a couple of the apps that you guys usually ask for. So WhatsApp, you're able to install it, no problem. Um, the way that's going to look, it's just going to look a little bit different with this um, e-ink screen, right? Like, you know, it's going to look a little bit different. Then you have new pipe, which is kind of like my equivalent of, um, essentially YouTube. So if you really wanted to watch a video, you can technically do that. But as you see right here, I'm going to lower the volume. Uh, as you see right here, it's not going to be the best experience. Uh, so I don't necessarily recommend it. So, but you can do it. Like, let's say that you need to watch a certain information or get something from the web. Uh, you can technically do that. Uh, let's go back and let's go out of this um, right here. Um, let's clear a little bit of the RAM. It has six gigs of RAM, which is adequate for an Android device. Uh, my favorite app, of course, and what you probably will use this device most for is reading. So if you want to read something specific, it right there, it explores your directory. You're able to select. I loaded my book here. So, you know, low tech life. Um, and if you tap, you're able to do increase or decrease of the font size, spacing, uh, word expansion, et cetera, et cetera, depending on the book. So as you see right here, I'll show you a little bit more of how it reads right there. Um, you know, you're able to read it. It's pretty legible. You're able to, uh, like, again, if you tap at the top, decrease some of the size, if you want to decrease it, the font. Uh, you can also increase it all the way. Uh, let's go a little bit smaller. And you can also, the spacing of the words, you know, small. It will change very, you know, very little, like, of the reading experience. But I think it's, you know, very welcome. Uh, you can also increase the contrast if you need more contrast. Uh, font weight, uh, you know, right there. We're going to go a little bit thicker. Um, then kerning and hinting. And there's plenty of plethora. I, I personally recommend CoReader if you are looking for an application for an e-ink device. Uh, you're able to pretty much adjust everything that you need with your 
with your files and have the best reading experience possible. So, you know, if you're looking for something in specific, I think it will allow you to, you know, get right there. So, boom. And this is the book. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to check it out on the link below. Um, and there is how it looks with a footnote because, you know, I have a lot of footnotes in my book. Um, but any book, you know, that has a footnote, subtitles, et cetera, et cetera, you'll be able to read it and kind of go back. Um, Antenna Pod, a good example of how a podcasting app would look. If you're looking for a specific, you know, area of a podcast or, you know, something like that, you can listen to it. It has Bluetooth and great connection. Again, I haven't had many issues with the device and I have had a very, very good experience just using it just as a whole. Um, and the battery life is excellent. Definitely multi-day battery life because it's not using data. Um, so here, I'm going to just go to that and subscribe. And as you see, it kind of like loads everything and you're able to do whatever whatever you need to do. Uh, last but not least, uh, maps. So it does have a GPS unit in here. Uh, so something that you should consider is whether that's going to be good enough for you. I loaded organic maps, which is offline maps only, and you're able to search whatever it is that you need. Uh, here in the Denver area, I am able to, to search. Uh, I will search for Starbucks, even though I don't frequent that quite often, but let's say that one right there. It's going to give you the address, and then you're able to, you know, kind of like, hey, I want to navigate route from, route to, you know, and let's say that uh, it doesn't lock your um, GPS. I tested the GPS and it, it loads it very well outside of the house. Uh, but if you're indoors, it's not going to get it, but you can add your own starting point. And, you know, let's like, let's put another Starbucks right there from Starbucks to Starbucks. Um, and right there, it's going to give you directions as you move, as you go around, as you do whatever it is that you need to do. So it looks pretty good, uh, in my opinion for this, this app, you know, and it, you know, tells you like, Hey, go on Hamden and go in here. Uh, so 3.7 kilometers, so that's about a mile and a half, two miles. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, I think it's pretty good. Um, it does have again, other features like a camera and I'll be showcasing samples right now uh, for you to see. I don't necessarily will use this as a camera replacement, but if you need to do a picture, it gets the job done, which is what you know, you're looking most of the time with a companion device. It's just like an extra added functionality to things that your dumb phones cannot do. So whether you have a light phone or a flip phone or whether you have a punked, whatever it is that you have, this can help you, you know, kind of like use the device in a augmented way and not have too much friction in your life because you're able to have the things that you need for work or for travel, for leisure, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one alternative that I'll definitely recommend is the Ink Palm, which is different than the Books Palma, which is the one I'm reviewing right now. That one is a little bit cheaper. This one is $250 to $180, and that one is about $150. So for $100, I think you get better functionality out of that one than spend like the $200 on this one. That's just my personal opinion. But if you have any questions about this device or any of the other devices I have reviewed, make sure to put them in the comments below and I'll be interacting with you guys. Thank you for watching another review. Definitely a thumbs up for me for this device, a good companion device. I wish it was a little bit smaller, but that's just what it is. Thank you. See you in the next video.